Hey guys, I've had a lot of requests about going through the basics required for spray painting your car, so let's go through that now. Let's establish first of all that uh, I'm not an expert spray painter, but I did work as an airbrush artist for 13 years and I painted a lot of the uh, top show cars in the country and uh, been around all of the top panel shops in Sydney. I have a pretty good understanding on painting and um, for you guys who are starting out, I thought uh, this is a, a good base to work from uh, to get some practice ups. Alright, first things first, you need a spray gun. Now, there are a lot of expensive spray guns out there on the market and um, I've often found that um, this style of spray gun has really worked well for me. They're generally, from what I can gather, based roughly on an Iwata uh, spray gun and they're usually just cheaper Chinese copies. Not ridiculously cheap, these cost just over $100 Australian. Basic workings, we have the fan control here to change from basically a, a circular jet spray to a, to a fan, so you get your fan control. You have your needle control, so basically controls the amount of paint, how far you can pull the trigger back each time. And down on the base, you have your air control. I like this layout of gun. I've used lots of different guns, and these seem to be quite simple, quite easy to use, and, um, and I found them to be quite, quite decent. Particularly, I don't see the point in spending four or $500 on a, on a spray gun if you're just doing it at home. Gravity fed, I much prefer the gravity fed rather than the Venturi feed. Uh, Venturi feed are a bit uh, more cumbersome, they get in the way, they're fine for using as a primer gun or something like that, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of using them to try and do any decent spray painting work. So, first things first is get yourself a decent uh, spray gun. Next up, a mask. Now, this is a really important part of spray painting and you need to make sure you get a specific spray painting mask. So this particular mask, uh, the brand is uh, Sunstrom, 99% of the panel shops I've uh, worked in have used this type of mask. Uh, as long as it has a gas filter and then a particle filter and then uh, more disposable particle filters in the front. So it has to have the gas filter in it. You cannot just use a mask for uh, gardening or dust. It's not going to protect you from the vapors in the paint. Make sure you use the right mask and if you're not sure, don't do it because it is really nasty and this stuff can kill you. So uh, use the right stuff. Can't stress it enough. Make sure you protect yourself because it's your health at risk. So get yourself a proper mask and if you're not sure, ask, do your research, don't believe me, don't believe anybody else, get a right mask. Then you're gonna need the, uh, the other basics. You need some prep sole, prep wash, wax and grease remover basically is what it is. That's what you need to use to clean everything down and make sure there's no contaminants on the vehicle before you paint it. If you don't clean it properly, you can get uh, silicon spots and grease and basically your paint won't stick properly and you'll have all sorts of issues and you'll be tearing your hair out. You've got to make sure your job is clean and tidy and you'll get a good finish. It's all about prep work. Uh, it's been said a million times because that's the truth. It's all about the prep. So the better you prep your car, the better finish you're gonna get. Depending on, on what you're using, uh, mixing cups, particularly if you're using uh, two-pack products because uh, you need to get the mixing ratios right. You can use uh, mixing sticks. These have all got the, the numbers on here, so you can work out how much paint you need and what the right mixing ratio is. And then, of course, you need some thinners of some sort to uh, just some, some gun wash, basically, to clean your gun out after you're finished. Make sure you clean it properly, straight away. It's always tempting to go, I'm done, lay it down, oh, I've had enough, and just leave it, I'll clean it tomorrow. Clean it straight away, otherwise you may, you'll end up with this gunked up gun that doesn't work properly and you're just going to be tearing your hair out. Always, always clean your guns thoroughly and immediately 
and uh, you'll have so much less headaches right then. All right, the next things you're going to need is some form of masking material. So uh, most guys starting out use just the old newspaper. I'm not a huge fan of newspaper, uh, mostly because there's often little holes from staples or sometimes they've got just holes around the edges and it's easy to miss those holes and you get overspray where you don't want it and it's really annoying. But uh, that's the first way to go is the old newspaper. I don't use it anymore, mostly because I bit the bullet. I knew I was doing a bit of spray painting and if you can justify it, I absolutely recommend getting a masking machine. It makes things so much easier. The tape is on a roll, uh, running through onto the paper and you just pull it out, tear it off. Your tape is already on the edge, so you can just stick it straight onto whatever you need to do, you're done. It makes masking so quick and easy, and for the maybe $200 investment on the roll of paper and the machine, it is so worthwhile. If you're gonna be doing any amount of masking, I, I would absolutely recommend one every day of the week because working with newspaper can be really, really slow and tedious. The next thing I would recommend is if you can justify getting yourself a roll of plastic and this roll here, it opens out so it will cover all the way over a car, all the way to the ground. It is really good if you're just doing a little part, say you're spraying something on the bumper at the front, you don't want to strip it off the car for whatever reason, you can cover up the rest of the car nice and easily and quickly and, um, and just get on with the job. So, uh, so plastic is, is really handy. Of course, if you're just doing a one-off thing, you're probably not gonna invest in all this sort of stuff and you just have to use what you can. Um, use old bed sheets, use whatever you can. Just make sure if you're using sheets or things like that, don't spray directly onto it because they are porous, obviously, and the paint will get through. And that brings me to tapes. Um, get yourself a whole bunch of two-inch tape and a whole bunch of three-quarter inch tape. I've found uh, sometimes it's worth going to your spray paint supplier and actually looking at how much an entire box of tape costs because tape can get really expensive and uh, and adds up and I've often found that the huge saving on buying an entire box of tape really uh, makes it a lot less painful in the end, in the long run. Try and use the, uh, the three quarters as much as you can because obviously the two inch costs a lot more make sure you tape up every joint. So if you're using newspaper, every place it overlaps, make sure you mask it up because paint will get in there and you're gonna get this overspray all over your job. So mask, mask, mask. All right, and obviously the next thing you need is a compressor. And I recommend, at a minimum, I generally suggest that something that is actually belt drive. This one here is basically the biggest I could get that ran on your normal power socket and it just keeps up with uh, spray painting duties. Any of the smaller ones, you'll generally find that they really struggle to keep up with the pressure needed to paint a car. You also need to make sure you have a good air, a good regulator uh, with a moisture trap on it that uh, captures most of the moisture that builds up inside the tank and you need to make sure you drain your tank regularly. Mine is uh, looking pretty crusty here, but uh, yeah, it needs to probably a good service and tidy up, but. Uh... Okay guys, so that's the very basics you need for getting started to practice doing some spray painting. Now, uh, there's a lot more information that you should know and uh, you'll learn along the way and practice, practice, practice is uh, the big thing and prep work. Make sure you get your prep work right. That is uh, by far and away one of the most important things to know. Got any more suggestions uh, that I can add or that uh, you other videos you'd like me to make to give you a bit more information, uh, let me know. If you're enjoying the videos, please like and subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff, and you can follow the build of my old Porsche 911 and my Datsun 240Z on my channel. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you guys.